Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. I have a really cool quilt for you today. It's the spinning rail fence block that we created here at Shabby Fabrics. It's so easy. A jelly roll, two yards of your black fabric, and two yards for your border and binding, and that's a quilt. And that's a good size quilt, too. This is the Welcome Home Flannel Collection design right here at Shabby Fabrics and printed um, by Maywood Studio. Just beautiful, lovely, warm, cozy flannel or cold up here in North Idaho. So we really appreciate our flannel. This is a cool, easy thing to do. So even if you're a beginner, this project is absolutely for you. Grab your jelly roll. The first thing you'll do is simply sew three of the strips together and you want to mix and match as you can see uh, there's lots of different varieties, so you want to plan that out and you'll decide which strips you want, strip sets you want to create. And you'll go ahead and sew those together. And we went ahead and pressed the seams to the outside. That would really be your preference, doesn't really matter. Once you have that, now this unit should measure six and a half inches. If it does not, and I'm going to use my ruler here to check, and I'm right on the money. If it doesn't, you're going to want to go ahead and adjust your seam allowances to make sure that is. So, of course, before you sew the whole jelly roll together, do a strip set and then do that check. And that way you can see, are you sewing a little bit narrow? Are you sewing a little bit uh, wide? Or are you sewing right on the money? Hopefully it's right on the money. So once we have checked that we do in fact have now six and a half inch strips, I'm gonna take my Creative Grids ruler and I'm just gonna come up. This is six and a half inches wide, which I love. It's so easy. When you sew strip sets together, a lot of times the edges aren't exactly squared up. Go ahead and use your ruler just to clean up that edge. Of course, you want everything to be nice and square. And at this point, it doesn't really matter that I line up on my mat because I'm using the ruler right now. I'm making sure that I'm square to that edge with my ruler. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut each block, as you can see. In fact, let me show that block to you. Has two of the same in opposing corners and two different sets and the other two opposing corners. You can do that any way you want. It could be completely scrappy where all four sides are different um, or it could be all four the same. This is completely up to you. This is just the way that we decided to do it. So you would of course just continue um, getting your six and a half inch squares all the way down. And then simply, once you have your four, you'll simply arrange them and we're just gonna sew two side by side and two side by side and sew that together. So now you have your block. We have created a really cool ruler here at Shabby Fabrics. This is a nine inch ruler. As you know, most rulers are six and a half, nine and a half, 12 and a half. There's always the half. In this instance, with the three, three strips together, we actually needed a nine inch ruler. So we went ahead and created one here. And what we have is these lines on the diagonal and on the vertical and horizontal uh, axes. So it's very easy to use this ruler. So I'm going to actually use the ruler, what's called on point, and I'm going to line up those seams. I think you can probably see that pretty well with the overhead camera. And I will begin cutting around it. This is a 17 inch uh, mat. I absolutely love this. I used a 12 a lot, but in this instance, it was bigger than my spinning mat. So we, we are all now also offering the larger spinning mat for larger blocks. Now this ruler, because it has the etching on the backside, I feel has plenty of grip. But if you are a person that likes to add grip, um, kind of the back of your rulers, we've recently found the True Grips, which we absolutely love. They're just these little dots that you put on the back of your ruler, they're clear. It just gives it even a little bit more tactile, a little bit more um, contact so it won't slip if you are likely to slip. But again, I don't need that today. I feel like we have plenty of grip with this ruler. I'm just gonna center everything up very nicely. And I can see that my ruler is just projecting ever so slightly beyond my fabric. I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can definitely spin. Here, we're gonna rotate. This is why I love a spinning mat. I don't have to move my fabric, so my accuracy increases, and I'm not doing some crazy cut under my arm, so my safety goes up. Accuracy and safety going up is great in my book, and I bet it's good in your book too. So let's go ahead now, and here is the beginning of our block. Of course, we need to put some corners on that, which is just a piece of cake. It's a seven inch square, will be your, your corners here on your block. 
And what you'll do, in fact, let me put it back together. So here's your seven inch square, and you're just gonna cut that. So you'll need two per block, right? So I have one here, one here, here and here, and you'll simply sew those on as you would expect. Once we've done that, let me bring out our block. This is what your block will look like. And we're gonna go ahead and take this back to our spinning mat. Love our spinning mat. And you'll make 20 of these blocks. The jelly roll, if it has the 42 strips, will make 21. So you have one block left over, which will be kind of cool. You might be able to make an accent pillow, maybe add um, some detail around the edge to grow the pillow if you want to, but that would be a really cool thing to do with that last block. This is the 12 and a half inch ruler. Because half of 12 and a half is six and a quarter, I'm gonna line up six and a quarter this way and six and a quarter this way making sure I'm checking everything very, very carefully. Mama always said, you know the saying, right? Cut, measure, measure twice, cut once. I'll go ahead and square up all the way around. I love these spinning mats. I don't have to move my project. Accuracy goes up. And again, I have to admit, I was one of those people that went under the arm and I definitely nicked myself, and that is just scary. That is just a bad idea, especially with a very, very sharp rotary blade. So here's your block. You'll simply make 20 of those, sew them all together, four rows across by five down, add your outer border and your binding, and it's complete. So if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. That way you never miss a video, and give us a thumbs up. We always love getting feedback, and I'll see you next time.